Thank you for joining me for another episode of The Art of Volunteering. Today, I have my amazingly fun friend, Kate Henson, on, my, uh, on the um, podcast with us. She is just amazing. We've been friends for a couple of years now, and I just really think you're going to feel her energy as you watch and listen today. Thank you. So, Kate, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm really excited to be here. I am. <laughs> awesome. Let me tell you a little bit about Kate. She, is a long, she has a long-standing passion for the unique community of Southern Chester County. Her love for the community blossomed over 10 years ago when she took a position as a special education aide at the Kenna High School, where she learned around, um, about the deep Lanax roots of the community and the particular barracks Lanax youth face. Kate joined the garage team as the director of development in 2018 and has been honored to be part of the support and services provided to marginalized youth and community members during, during her tenure at the garage. One moment. The organization has developed outcome-driven programs and strategic initiatives to reach industry, recognize youth development impacts, partnerships, and collaboratives that have been strengthened and enhanced. The garage has been able to deepen services to impact youth. That's a lot. It's you a lot. do so much. It's a lot. It's but okay. I wouldn't have it any other way. Really. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So I just love the garage. So I would like you to share to our listeners who the garage is, what it does, just what you're doing. Sure. So um, first of all, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Um, I was just saying to my friend Stormy that, you know, life never pauses. I'm currently moving. I'm currently convalescing from COVID. Um, and I'm still doing my job as director of development at the garage. Um, so the garage is an after school youth development program. So basically what that means is we provide free of charge after school programming Monday through Thursday, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. to students 6th through 12th grade in both the Kennett School District. And we also have a second location in Avondale, which serves the Avongrove School District. So if you are familiar with Southern Chester County, it's a very large migrant worker population. Um, very heavy, both Mexico and South American um, families who have come here. Um, to either be part of the agricultural community or to join their family um, on their journey. So what we do at the garage is we provide specific and tailored services to community members who are either marginalized due to their race, ethnicity, income status, um, residency status, and we ensure that those students and those families are able to get the same unique experiences, upper hand, possibilities, exploration, and pursue their potential just the same way that anybody around them would be. Um, so we do that through academics. That's a big foundation of what we do. We provide daily academic support to students. So every day our students come in. In and there's tutors and there's garage staff and there's bilingual support and anything they need to kind of get a leg up academically. But we make sure to pair that with fun things. So we include social, emotional, relational enrichment programs. You know, doing your homework isn't nearly as fun if you don't get to go to the circus later, you know. Um, yes. So we make sure that we provide those fun opportunities as well. And one of the things I think that makes us unique um, compared to other youth serving organizations is we have a long term plan for our students where we look to make sure that once they leave us, that all of the efforts that we've provided don't stop, that all of the efforts that we've done help them do post secondary success, whether that's workforce, college, technical school, whatever it may be. So we provide a lot of post-secondary and vocational work as well through internships, college tours, SAT application, both in English and Spanish, and also including the parents in this journey, as many of our parents have not been able to have those experiences themselves. So 
like me doing a lot of hats, the garage does a lot of hats. Um, And whatever hat someone may need, we really look to try and fill it in the best way possible. All right. So with that, do you have volunteers? Volunteers are one of the backbones of the garage. Um, In fact, when the garage was opened in 2001, it was 100% volunteer based. There was not paid employees of the garage until I believe four or five years into its existence. It was 100% employee, uh, volunteer based, pardon me. Um, And volunteers are really important to us for multiple reasons. So volunteers provide services, right? And Services can be anything. I like to think when I explain volunteering at the garage to people that service is in a capital S because there's really effort to it. And I really want you to put your effort into it. And that's a two-way street because I'm not going to ask you to do something that you don't want to do and then say, put 100% in. That's not fair. So volunteers are really important at the garage because we have so many different opportunities, like I listed before. If you're into academics, you could be a tutor. If you're into social and emotional and fun things, which who isn't, but (laughs) if you're into social, emotional, fun things and you want to be a field trip volunteer, if you want to provide an opportunity for kids to maybe come visit your work, those are also great service capital S opportunities. We also know that sometimes people don't want to do that or may not have the time for that or really even the mental and emotional capacity for that. So we say, do you like to cook? Do you want to cook? Come and cook our kids a meal. Come and help with our kitchens that we provide food out of every day. That's a really great intro volunteer setting so that people can kind of get warmed up. No pun intended. (laughs) Um, But volunteers are truly crucial. Um, We have over 100 volunteers ranging in ages from college to retired, all different walks of life, all different language speakers, all different experience backgrounds. And we really celebrate that because we want our students to see that there are people that have their same lived experiences, which is very important but also for them to get to know people that don't have their same lived experience and get to kind of widen their breadth of their community members, their neighbors, their partners. Um, Sometimes some of the best volunteer partnerships are two people, a student and a volunteer who have absolutely nothing in common and they create the most incredible bond just by both putting 100% into the relationship and the efforts of volunteering. How do people find you if they want to volunteer? So we do have a website. We have a website at www.garageyouthcenter.org. And that's kind of our homepage. Anything you want to know about us, our events, our programs, our successes, what we're doing next, and importantly to this conversation, how to volunteer. So we have a section at the top that says get involved, and there's a volunteer tab. We have a full-time volunteer coordinator, and she provides volunteer, I guess if you will, distribution, for lack of a better term. She's kind of our filter, so everything comes to her. Once you fill out the form on the website, if you send her an email, if you call, you're going to get connected to Murphy. And if you've lived in Southern Chester County for a while, you probably know Murphy Jane McCardle. She's another spitball, spitfire. She's amazing. She's incredible and really gets people excited to be where they are, which is why she's our volunteer coordinator. So once you do all that, Murphy's going to chat with you and really get to know you. And I think that's another really unique part of our organization is Murphy really takes her job and her passion for our kids and our organization very seriously and looks to make sure that whoever is coming into the building really matches with what we're looking to achieve. So it's not just a, hey, I'm available, or hey, I need community service hours, or hey, I'm kind of bored. Murphy wants to know your interests, your hobbies, your past experiences. When are you available? Can you be more available, less available? You as a volunteer are an equally important part of our organization. And so what we do is we really have found to custom tailoring that 
has made a lot more success with long-term, deeply involved volunteers. I love it. I love it. So when you're done with your coffee, can you tell me a story, or maybe you have more than one, like story of impact, where you've seen a volunteer truly, I'm going to use the same word, impact a student's life? Oh, absolutely. Um, so I'm, I want to celebrate um, one of our volunteers whose name is Bob. And he would, he would absolutely kill me if he found out because he's one of those volunteers that does so much. And he's like, oh, no, no, it's fine. It's fine. He doesn't want to be in the spotlight. But that's, that's how you know that he's a goodie, right? Is that he's doing to do. Um, so Bob is a retired corporate executive <clears throat> who wanted to use his time and his talent and his treasure. Those are the three T's that we hear a lot talking about volunteering. But Bob wanted to use his efforts, time, talent, and treasure in a way that was impactful. And he found out about the garage through friends that live in Southern Chester County. And he originally joined as a tutor, probably about four or five years ago. And he started tutoring a young man um, who was from a large immigrant family from Mexico. Um, this young man is incredibly bright. And he decided that he wanted to be involved in engineering and computer engineering, which is what Bob used to be involved with. So Bob said, okay, well, that's great. I think we're going to, I think we're going to be fast friends. So Bob originally started as a tutor and he became a lot more deeply involved with this student to the point when this student got accepted to Millersville University for a degree in computer science, Bob moved him into college. So Bob drove him out to Millersville, packed up the car, brought him out there spent time with his family, and he drove him out to college, um, which is a really incredible, sweet moment to share. Um, they're still in contact, and Bob has continued to share his gifts with other students, other young men who are very interested in career-driven motivation. Um, he's helping young men get their licenses, and he's just a really great member of our uh, volunteer community that way. And Bob decided that he wanted to give even more. So he joined our board as a treasurer. And he's been a wonderful asset as a board member and a wonderful advocate um, for our community. And he's a board member that's not afraid to get his hands dirty. I know that there's a lot of board love members that. that love that, right? And, you know, when we pick up our food donations every Monday at Whole Foods, and it's a messy job the back door with crates and food and wet stuff and a van. I mean, it's a messy job, right? Bob goes every Monday, picks up the food, drops it off at both locations, says hi to the staff with a smile on their face, asks how everybody's doing. Everyone is so excited to see Bob. And really, I wish, I'm sure this is said about every volunteer. I wish we could clone him. I yeah. want 75 more Bobs. Yeah. But he's he's a really big member of of the impact within our community for sure. That's amazing. You touched on something that I I've talked to other people about um, Bob being in that corporate setting for so long. The garage gives him purpose. Yes. Yeah, I mean, like when you're used to getting up and going out to work and having people around you, yeah. like you're now around students and, mm -hmm. and, and the adults around them, but you've created this new sense of community that as much as that young person's receiving, Bob's receiving too. So it's just like, it's a, it's a win-win situation. It is. And, and, and we see that a lot. Again, the unique community specifically of Southern Chester County, there's a lot of large corporations that are based in the area. Um, so we see a lot of DuPont retirees, Exelon retirees, WL Gore retirees. Um, and it's a very specific area with a very specific skill set. 
Um, and so we really like to continue to have partnerships with those places so that we can. I'm so sorry, we've got a guest coming up here. It's my dog. That's okay. <laughs> um, so we really like to invest in those communities because we want to make sure that those partnerships are both with current employees, but also that when they do choose to retire and change their career path, that we are somebody who still wants to continue a partnership with them. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. You want to introduce your dog? Oh, he's shy. He's going to sit down in a minute, but Gage is my dog. He's okay. just hanging out right here. That's awesome. Right, buddy? Okay, since Gage has joined us, uh, let's ask, let's bring this around. Can you, do you have a volunteer journey? I do. Um, so I, I'm not going to lie to you. I was never a big volunteer -er, -er, okay. um, in high school and college. Um, high school, I was one of the kids that probably could have used the garages services. Um, I was a little bit of a troublemaker. Um, I only did volunteering because I was told to do so court mandated. Um, and I, I never had that passion when I was a young person, right? But I've always been interested in helping. And I think when, I think the word volunteering scares people sometimes because it's a commitment. It's, oh, I signed up to do this and I don't really want to do it. And, oh, it's not going to, it's not going to be worth my time. I'm not going to make a difference, you know, but I think when we talk about volunteering and you really strip it down is that you're just helping. And helping isn't always roadside cleanup or tutoring. It's that it's just showing up. I think that really helps people kind of ease into volunteering. And so when I started my job here at the garage, being um, a, a member of the leadership team, there were a lot of things that I kind of had to had to volunteer for. Mm -hmm. Rotary, other service organizations. Etc. And at first, when I started them, I thought, okay, it's 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 for the good of the garage, for the good of my career. Once I started these journeys, I can't now imagine my life without them. Um, I am very deeply involved in my Rotary Club, which I do volunteer efforts through there, and I have created an amazing community around me with a fabulous group of family and friends. Um, I volunteer with Impact 100, which is a women's philanthropy group in Philadelphia. Um, I provide efforts for their programs committee. Um, and I'm also a member of the Chester County Women's Commission, where I work to do efforts to, you know, build up the potential of women in our community, specifically in Chester County. Um, Just on that, last year you facilitated a... Uh, a I did. Yeah. And I volunteered to do it. And you volunteered to do it. Now, what exactly was that? It was a, a round table? Yes. Or so the Chester County Women's Commission works in deep partnership with the Fund for Women and Girls of Chester County, um, which I'll refer to as the fund. And the fund does blueprint Zoom meetings. And the blueprint is basically the culmination of all of the work done by the fund. They provide statistics and research and understanding about how women of all walks of life are being both positively and negatively impacted within our community. And what they do is they take this blueprint and use it kind of as a foundation for these outward facing roundtable conversations so that people can be more involved with the research that's being provided. So I was a facilitator um, and it included, you know, members of our Chester County commissioners. And we were just talking about what it meant to be a woman in the workplace and really kind of having an intimate conversation about what it looks like, either both as a high level executive or even if your workplace is your home. What does that look like as a woman? So that was something that I did facilitate last year. Well, that's very cool. Thanks. And of course, you enjoyed it. I did. I did. And I feel like. 
I feel like my volunteer journey has really made me more well-rounded. Um, I'll, I'll tell a joke um, or I'll tell a story. I used to work for a legal nonprofit that had a female executive director. And I worked there when I was much younger. I was like in my very early 20s. Um, so I thought I was an adult, but I wasn't. Um, <laughs> and this female executive director was always on the go. She was on boards. She was doing, she was also a Rotarian. She was on committees. She would, go, 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 go. And a coworker and I would always be like, how does she have so much time? How does she have all these commitments? You know, this and the other. This coworker and I became very good friends and we are still good friends. And we were out to dinner a couple months ago. And I said to her, I said, I'm so sorry. Like, you know, I'm on my phone, you know, while the appetizers are being dropped off. I said, I just have to like chit chat with this speaker that I'm coordinating for Impact 100. And I have to send an email real quick and this and the other. And she looked at me and she goes, you're the new Wendy. <laughs> and I said, oh my gosh, am I? She goes, you're on the go. I said, I guess I am. And it's so funny because I couldn't even imagine when I was in my early 20s how Wendy did it all. And now I'm like, oh my gosh, I guess I I guess I am doing a lot of the same stuff Wendy did. So it's just cool to see that evolution of my involvement with community and volunteer and outward facing effort. Okay. So if you could put why you volunteer into 60 seconds, can you do that? Can you put why you volunteer in 60 seconds? I think so. Um, because I can. Okay. Um, I, I think volunteering is just as important for the person who volunteers as for the people that you're assisting or the cause that you're assisting. I do. I think it's equally as important, if not more important. I'm right there with you. <laughs> I totally agree with you on that. I, I think it is. Um, and I think if everybody just volunteered a little bit more, and again, don't don't be like volunteer capital V like no, it's, help. It's more than that. Yeah, just help. You just know, show. It's it's physical. It's mental. Mm -hmm. It's it's spiritual. Not necessarily in a religious way, but it's like you're just you're giving of yourself. You know, it's I just that's why I do what I do. The yeah. art of volunteering is yeah. because. I want to encourage people to find what they're passionate about. And I guarantee there's someone who needs a volunteer to come alongside them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, a recent um, episode just had um, this, this young woman who is an accountant by trade. She's now retired. And she went to Africa to do internal controls and audit for a ministry that she's uh, you know affiliated with. Yeah, yeah. She's an accountant. And yeah. she found a way to share that skill. Yep. Yeah. And she showed up. She showed up. Step one. She showed up. Yep. Very cool. Yeah. All right. This is like I I, I think it's a fun question. Okay. <laughs> I, I think it is. Can you share a blooper? It doesn't mean it went wrong. It mm -hmm. just didn't go as planned. And what did you learn from it? Oh, um, and it can be from your volunteer journey yeah. or from the garage. So the garage has a big holiday event every year. It's a fundraiser. It's a lot of fun. Shameless plug. It's on December 2nd. If you, uh, if anyone wants to join us, there's information on the website. Um, but because of who we are and because of our nonprofit status and because of our fun, creative nature, a lot of the decorations and efforts that we do are in-house and they're volunteer-based. So we do something every November called Craft Night, which is where volunteers come and they do the crafts to make the decorations for the holiday event. So my first craft night, <laughs> um, my first craft night was an absolute nightmare. <laughs> um, 
I had started this job in September. Okay. So craft night was not even two months later. And they were like, here you go. Here's your event. And I was like, okay. Um, I had about 15 women who had taken time out of their evening to do crafts. And I was the point person. And they were like, okay, what do we do? And I was like, um, I don't know. So basically, I was just kind of coming up with it on the fly. I could tell that people were a little confused because I was confused. And it we didn't really get a lot done. It was just, it was like a big, it was like a car wreck. It was like one thing after another. <laughs> so I said to myself as soon as it was over and I got home and I sat down and I said, okay, I'm never doing it that way again. So one of my big things about volunteering and not just with volunteering, but nonprofit in general, right? That everybody is doing so much all the time you're going to ask people to do something. And I say this with all of my involvements, the garage, rotary, impact, women's commission. If you're going to ask people to be involved. Please make it worth their time. Mm -hmm. Because if it's not, if anybody feels even the tiniest bit slighted, they're not coming back. Sure. And you're going to lose a potential really great partner. So what I did is I came up with a whole craft night you know, plan and I wrote out instructions and I got an easel and I put little and I made little like snack boxes and I got music. And then the next year craft night was incredible. And people were like, I'm going to tell my girlfriend to come next year. I'm going to do this. And just by seeing what went wrong and not going, oh, well, that was a complete failure and I'm never going to do that again. But saying, oh, that was a complete failure. And what am I going to do to make sure that it's not again? Right. What am I going to do to make sure that it's an enjoyable experience for everyone who's coming out to help me? That was a big learning curve for me. Because I've now done that with everything in my life, with the garage and my other efforts. What am I going to do to make sure that this is worth people's time? What am I going to do to make sure that somebody wants to come back and be involved and be part of this? Because that's a disservice to them. It's a disservice to your organization, to your mission, to your efforts. I think everyone just needs to have a plan. Follow it. It's what it is. That's the best. All right, Kate. We're at the point of the interview where we're wrapping up. Okay. I'm going to give you the platform to love with capital letters. Love on the garage why people should get involved, why they should support you, why they should come out to December 2nd for your holiday night. Just love on them. I'm going to try not to get emotional. Um, the the garage is, it, is one of my favorite places. Um, I, I applied for a job to the garage three times because I knew that I was meant to be there. And the third time is when I got my current position and it's when I was, you know, the universe said it's time you're ready. And this organization is life-changing. It's life-saving. We have changed the lives of so many students, their parents, their families, and changed the lives of community members who were involved with us. And I think that's what makes us special. Um, and what I'm really proud of about the garage is kids can just be kids. I grew up in a very privileged, white, upper class community. And I recognize that. And I'm very grateful for my upbringing. But when I moved down here and I saw right here in our United States how many people are struggling and even services that are meant to be for them are difficult to garner. Nothing about the garage is difficult. Just show up. Just come. Just fill out a form. It's free. Bring your whole self and we will take care of you. Um, we have sent so many students to college. We've sent so many students to grad school. 
We have multiple garage alumni on our board of directors as part of our staff, as part of our team. They loved it so much that they wanted to come back and be part of it as an adult. You know, our goal, our goal, my goal is that eventually I'm not going to be here. It's going to be all garage alumni run. That's the goal. It needs to be all garage alumni, board, staff, everybody. Um, and really all of the efforts, financially, volunteer, donations, it all goes back to the kids. It's not going back to some exterior, you know, cause or force. It's not going to your surf and turf dinner at a gala, which is fine. But every single dime, effort, hour, minute, blood, sweat, tears is going back to the kids. And they feel it and they know it. And what's amazing is that we have taught our kids to feel it and know it and be thankful. That's part of our programming, honoring commitments, knowing what your community needs and showing up for what your community needs. So our kids can be the future volunteers. And it's just the best place in the world. It really is. I love going to work. I love my job. It's not even a job. I just, I love it. So if you were looking for somewhere to really fill your cup, that's holistic and fun and adventurous and energetic, little chaotic. Garage is the place for you, for sure. That's a beautiful thing. Well, thank you, Kate, for coming on today. Thank I, you, Stormy. You know, I, I, I've enjoyed this, so I know my listeners have enjoyed hearing oh, about you, you and the garage and just the impact that you're making yeah. in so many lives. And thank Bob for us. I will. Tremendous I will. Make sure he listens so he knows that he got a I shout will. out. Yes. <laughs> he deserves to know. And thank you for all your work in the community and for highlighting the people that, you know, are the unsung heroes. I, I think it's an amazing platform that you have. And I know that listeners really appreciate hearing all these great stories. Well, thank you so much. All right. Uh, I will see each of you again next time on The Art of Volunteering. If you found value in today's um, episode, and I don't know how you can't, uh, <laughs> rate and review us wherever you're listening to this episode. Uh, just leave us a, a comment. It helps other people to hear about who we are and what we do and why volunteering makes the world run. All right. Have a great day. Thank you.